we are going to do an overview guide on team composition. We're going to start off with a chosen fight with, uh, with unholds mixed in. And then we'll have some different things to pull on as we discuss you know, formations, team composition, and positions. So we'll just start by kind of walking through the fight. So as I'm looking at this fight, I'm looking at the two main threats. Damage from enemy two-handers, you know, reavers and chosen, and formation disruption from unholds. So ideally, we want, we want to be able to disable unholds and or some of the chosen with tanks or nets. And then focus fire down the reavers and chosen that we are not able to, to, to tie up. So I'd like to get my tanks on as many threats as possible. I have two and a half tanks. Uh, on each end of my flank, I have an indom tank. And my banner is a backup tank. So what I want to start by doing is try to sneak in some damage wherever I can with these hybrids. I mean, I'll take any shot I can get. I just want to hit stuff. So here we have the opportunity to catch an unhold with our down bro. So let's take it. Our lone wolf's ge our tanks generally have the lone wolf perk. We do get to catch two of the unholds. And then we'll back our fighting team up. Notice these, these guys didn't all get to get in down the first turn. That's not great, right? We didn't put Pathfinder in our tanks, and it does sometimes cause these kind of issues. So the, what the Chosen are doing is they're setting up one, they're setting up one tag away from us, with the thought that next turn they can move in and get a bunch of attacks off with an adrenaline combo. So I think we're still better off backing up one more tile. And we'll try to focus down one at a time if we can. And quick hands weapons will increase our damage here. And I think we should be waiting with most of these troops. That way the Chosen don't know where to go. See how they were able to reposition themselves? We can use that to our advantage with uh, reach weapons. And this guy can move forward a tile. This will give him uh, more likely an attack next turn. And here as well, this guy's already fleeing, so this tile is not going to get attacked. So we're trying to deny them attacks with tanks and with positioning at the beginning of the fight. Now our banner did get hit with Indom down. A banner we probably didn't make him good enough uh, for the test. I don't know how we, what we, how we built him in terms of like stat line. So this guy is disabling our backline, but we have the tools to deal with it. We'll start by trying to clear out some of the... I will, I will kill this guy for Zerk Frenzy procs. Start by trying to clear out some of the injured guys that cause some morale checks. And we're just taking whatever attacks that, that we're getting offered. Did I not give him a melee skill or am I just unlucky? Can we give him the 85 melee skill? That should be fine. So this guy cannot attack this tile. So again, we're using positioning to deny their two-handers attacks. And I will swap shields at every opportunity. Yeah, we forgot to give our we forgot to give this guy fatigue, but that's fine. We want to keep our shields fresh. 
this guy's not a big threat. I could dog to block the tile, but I'm pretty sure we can kill him before he kills any of our backfinders. So right now our problem is our banner. He's not, he's, he's not near the team. He's not tanking it on hold. Uh, he also doesn't, we forgot to give him fatigue. Uh, we can try to kill this one first. So throwing is generally the best single target damage in the game. But they chosen to have Pathfinder. So I think we move here to make sure this guy can't flee. So I don't want to occupy this tile, right? I could go here and long axe this one, but then this chosen gets a free attack on me. I don't think this is a reason to do that. Here we get two attacks if we hit with the long axe, right? And we have quick hands, so let's make sure we start with our great axe out if possible. I don't think we need a dog here. I don't think we need to use the resource. And this guy's gonna attack next turn anyways, so we might as well get ready to zerg him. And we're not using good guys, we're using post-gifted 85-32 for attack defense. And with good secondaries though. I think they have like 130 fatigue. Uh, this, uh, this, this concept works perfectly fine with the nimble as well. This tank's obviously not getting a lot of work done. But that's fine. So unholds, um... They will flip a target. This guy's just being useless this fight. If you have a melee and a ranged guy adjacent, they'll use flip. So let's say that this guy here is a melee, this temple hybrid. And there's a guy with the range up in the back here, the unhold will flip. Unless we net him. So ideally we save the nets to prevent those situations. You see how impactful Fearson is being for us here. And we have, we have really low fatigue on these brothers. Like 50. So you see we did lose an attack here. Uh, we have Weapon Master but no Pathfinder. But that's fine, that's not gonna lose us the fight. Not gonna lose the fight. This situation's all controlled here. I think we just need to start helping this part of the fight. This tank's taking a lot of pressure. He got stunned by un an unhold when Indom was down. We got attacked for two turns with no Indom. And that's like one of the ways tanks die is something breaks their Indom cycle. Or let's not let this guy got a rally. Or they morale break. This, this is controlled. We don't need to stay here. Whatever his unholds do is not going to kill us. It's going to be annoying, but it's not going to kill us. And we don't care if this unhold flips us. We have the same, basically the same guys. Oh, he got staggered and lost all his fatigue. Okay, that's what happened. Go doggo, you're killing an unhold.
And I've used all of his fatigue, but that's fine. We're in cleanup duty now, right? So the fact that we're out of fatigue now doesn't matter. Right, the fight's over. We have like one issue we're trying to fix. But this guy's not going to die. So we'll just get our attackers into position to start killing these guys. And we, I think we have a smoke pun on somebody if this tank needs to get bailed out. We'd also bait the animals into flipping to fix our positioning. So let's go ahead and do that so we can demonstrate. We'll just leave this hybrid here with a range weapon out. And this unhold should flip. There we go. And now we freed up our tank off the unhold by baiting him into flipping. Disarmed? Okay. I'll punch him. I don't think I throw of any defense. They have bone plating and high HP, so that's enough to be in melee combat for like one or two turns. And again, like these unholds, they don't do that much damage, right? Like we're not concerned about them killing us at this point in the fight. We're concerned about them throwing our guys around and not letting us play the fight we wanted to. Like, these guys are scary in larger numbers. They're scarier early in the game, but like once you're fighting these camps, they're—I mean—they're the enemy's techs, right? They just want to disrupt your your game plan. This guy's in trouble if he gets hit in the head, but like whatever, right? I think. Let's get this over with and we'll get to the damage screen. He's out of stamina, but he can still just attack with the long axe. All right, so uh, I can kind of see how that fight played out and kind of what our game plan was. Let's go ahead and a little bit I'll save up and we'll play the fight a little more slowly and we'll talk about its position and what they're doing. Let me go ahead and give my banner a little bit more fatigue. That was a sad banner. I think I only gave him 120 fatigue, which probably wasn't enough. I also gave him a backpack shield, that's probably your incorrect idea. Yeah, I give him 8 more fatigue. You don't need that either. That's fine, okay. So typically in fights, you have... I'd say... 3 different positions. You have backliners. Uh, backliners should be all offense. They should have just enough hit points that they're not at risk of getting like two-shotted. 
But their job is to kill stuff. Their job is to kill priority targets. Uh, I think four is the optimal backline number in a 12-man run. I think it's enough that you're, you don't get overwhelmed and surrounded, but you also don't lose damage and versatility. Your second position is your flankers. These can take a, a large variety of, of shapes. They can be Battleforge tanks, which one Battleforge tank is probably good. They can be Nimble tanks. Uh, nimble tanks are pretty good early. They fall off, kind of, but they let you win a lot of fights early game. They can be 200 Hammer Brothers. I think those are your three options for like these two slots. And then you probably always want one Forge tank, and then this is generally either a Nimble tank or a hammer. A hammer is good at fighting. Hammers like are good off tanks because they generate a ton of fatigue with their with a ton of melee defense with their AOE. Yeah, nimble tanks eventually get replaced by if you start to have two nimble tanks early in the game, one gets replaced by a forge tank and one gets replaced by a 200 hammer brother in like a general like idealized run. Now some runs your nimble tanks live and you finish the game with two nimble tanks. Uh, that happens quite a bit. Sometimes one dies and you need a forge tank. I think a forge tank is a priority over a hammer brother. The hammer brothers are hard to find. Some runs you don't find one and you beat the game before you ever find that you know, hedge knight with 35 melee defense. Or you know whatever you want for your hammer guy. But I think a forge tank is a, tank is a must for Kraken and for Monolith. So if those fights are on your to-do list, you always want one. You, you can do any fight without any one one position. Yeah, yeah. So the, for efficient, by efficient. But by efficient, I mean like doing it with bad brothers, right? Like these are the type of strategies you use for bad brothers. So your backline guys don't have to be very good. This build, these stars are a lie. This is an average hunter with like one star melee attack. Uh, we use Colossus and Gifted to buff up their line. These stars are just like whatever. These are all created in Editor. Um, you want two jabs. The, uh, the, the net is kind of questionable, right? Because that means when you do get closed in melee, you don't have the AP to take out your melee weapon. So you do carry a net. Make sure you have a plan to use it early in the fight so you don't lose your versatility. Anyways, and then you have your middle of your formation. That's like eight of your guys, right? Or six of your guys. Is four backliners. They should always be throwing melee hybrids. There's like teeny exceptions, but uh, there's never a reason to do anything other than throwing weapons in the backline. They're about triple the damage of the other options. Bows, crossbows, uh, sword lances. This stuff sucks. Don't use it. It's a waste of your time. You might as well just play with 11 people if you want to use those weapons. <laughs> you won't notice the difference. Um... If you want some sort of throwing melee hybrid, even if you can't get the high melee skill, like even like 70 melee skill is like fine. It's like, it's enough they can fight in melee for one turn, and that's all you need. So we'll, we'll position these guys as we want them to be. I mean, what's the priority? Getting one kill? I don't think it makes a difference what they're shooting at. Getting them one kill gives them another attack, right? The next position is the middle of your formation. Uh, gunners perform well on very good brothers very late in the game. So I've been bothering with gunners less and less. I'm, I'm very impressed with what gunners can do. But I, I think you often can beat all of the content with brothers that aren't as good as gunners require. Gunners really need bags and belts. A gunner without bags and belts is useless. Gunners need bags and belts, and they need Pathfinder, and they need Crossbow Mastery. So you basically, you're losing Colossus and Gifted. You're losing like, what is that, like 30 stat points? And you just, you still need to hit the same benchmarks as throwers without Colossus and Gifted. So you're trying to find like super high end, like Cell Swords that high roll range attack with stars, or like the God Hunter. Um, yeah, it's just a lot easier to get. The, the gap between gunners and these guys is not as big as you might think. 
Like, we can do this with, with double gunners. But... You can beat every fight with these guys. You can stomp them harder with gunners, but, like... <laughs> you could probably beat the game three times before you could find four gunners. If you're using builds... That, if you're using gunner builds that outperform these builds, they require absurdly strong brothers. So... Now, I like to have one defense guy in the middle of my formation. It doesn't necessarily have to be a shield guy. You can be like a dodge reach advantage guy. Um, in this case, we chose it to be our banner with Indom. Let's talk about... So, so mid, your, your mid formation, you're looking for versatility. You're looking for basically quick hands guys, right? That's the middle of your formation. That's, that's what's strongest. There's other things you can do that are just generally worse. So you want to have some sort of uh, two-hander. And you want to be able to quick hands out to a reach weapon. Anything else doesn't really matter. I like underdog because I like to have versatile brothers. So I don't skip underdog. Um, and these guys' job is to be a mix of... They're mostly for single... They're mostly for damage with some defense. Your banner can actually be almost any position. Any of the midline or backline. So with this role, the banner is like our mid our mid formation defense guy. Sometimes your banner can be a thrower. And you, that would be a thrower without melee. Uh, sometimes your banner can be a mid formation damage guy. Like one of these guys. It just depends on... Basically, whatever the, the first high resolve brother you have that can do a second job, that's your banner. So the banner isn't like a set job. You're basically just dropping Berserk and Killing Frenzy for Rally, right? For Fort Mine and Rally. And making some sort of like Fatigue Neutral-ish. But Fatigue Neutral, I mean no Zerg Frenzy. So in this in this lineup, he is, he is our off tank. You can go ahead and do his tank thing. So here we're looking for to catch relevant targets, right? So if I move him here, our enemies are gonna pour, just pour through this space. He can't get here and still in down. So his best move is just just go here and in down, right? So tanks, tanks are an AOE disable. To get the most use out of tanks, you're generally playing them away from your formation. So your, your tanks aren't near your team. So perks like Taunt and Rotate are total dead perks on tanks. Because they shouldn't be anywhere near your team, right? They can't do their job if they're near your team. And here, I think we have to go here and in down. So for this specific, specific fight, Pathfinder and tanks is quite good. So we got our three tanks. We were able to get Lone Wolf activated on none of them, but that's fine. We were able to catch two of the three unholds with tanks. And some chosen, right? So now we have a more manageable fight. Theoretically. <laughs> our tanks are like tanks are a screen and an AoE disable. And now we just have damage left. We just wait with everybody here. Let's see what the Chosen do. So here I have two options. I could move here and try to catch more Chosen in my Disable. Or I can just sit here. I can just sit here. Um, given that this guy is an axe and he's not that threatening, I think I can try to make this move. It also should turn Lone Wolf on. Up here this tank's pulling in enough enemies. I'd say you want to pull in like four or five enemies per tank. Any less you're just not getting value. And here again. So I don't think backing up two tiles is necessary now. I think we've... There aren't any two-handers that are going to attack us next turn. So if we back up one tile, all we accomplish is wasting a throwing jab shot this turn. So just go ahead and start throwing.
you can see how manageable the fight is for our main team, which is only nine guys. And again, this is why I recommend only running four backliners. As you start to move out your tanks, that's about all you can protect. This guy really wants to move. Let's see if we can get him free. Not quite. Yep, we got him free. And we'll just do as much damage as we can using our quick hands. So now I'm looking for what part of the fight is a problem. This this unhold up here is an annoyance. I also have four, three reavers and one chosen that I want to charge me. This brother could go here. Down here I only have two chosen. This I mean these guys are controlled. This guy's dead. So we're just gonna go here. And fight this part of the fight. That's not where I wanted to go, but sometimes AI does that. Now we can flip the unhold sweet uh, not the unhold sweet is unlikely to flip. And then we can use that hybrid for damage. We also want to get those nets out of our inventory so we can melee if we have to. So this one's more lightly armored, but I only have line of sight with one thrower on him. I think that's fine. I think I can kill all of these. And killing the two-handers is much more important than killing the unholds. So if we have the opportunity to use a reach weapon to attack the unholds, well, we should do it. Or to attack the... Two-handers, even when we're in melee with the unholds, we should be doing it. Here, uh, we can't deny them an attack, so this is fine positioning. Moving up gives him one extra attack. Moving back lets them catch my throwers, so I'll just stay here. Now, I think we've taken enough damage on this banner. I think if this unhold gets free, we have a couple nets nearby. I could in and go here, but I think he's done his job. Might just in and step back. Well, that way the unhold charges him, the unhold will... ...not stun him. Uh, but also this Chosen will likely go for a different target. You can see how these hybrids are forcing the chosen AI to try to do a loop around to get to them. And that makes the hybrids even better. Because it's, it's creating more time. They're almost doing the same thing the, ha the tanks are doing, right? Is creating time and space for our team to deal with a smaller enemy force. Now this unhold, how do you get free? They can't rotate unholds anymore. Uh, somehow this unhold got free. I have no idea what happened there. Uh, I'm going to focus this one, though. We'll do this with a little different compositions. We can reduce brother quality if that makes the fight a little more interesting. Okay, whatever. Alright, there's fearsome. We're just back. We don't want this on this on hold, we want to stop the flip by staying away from him.
And we have a guy here ready to tank. Uh, I could hit this one, huh? Put a little more relevant damage on the enemy. Human than on the unhold. We're killing the high damage targets, and then we're starting to line up... Uh, Line up damage with our throwers on the unholds. And making sure we never leave our backliners adjacent to our frontliners here. We're out of throwables, that's fine. We can go kill these some of these guys in melee here. You can see, like, we're, we are out of jabs now, and it's annoying, but, like, the main fight is over, right? What's happening is under control. We've killed all the Chosen, most of the Reavers. Uh, it's not great that their, like, banner tank is kind of being derpy there. The banner is always going to be kind of like that, though, right? Like, it's never going to be like this, like, god of war. Not, like, realistically. He's going to be a banner that does a little bit of another job. These hybrids don't have any melee defense again. They're just relying on a deep HP pool and uh, short short contact with enemy in melee for their EHP. And this guy's not gonna get targeted again, right? <laughs> he doesn't have any. We gave him 60 melee skill. That was a, that was a super lucky double puncture. And you want to put daggers in your tanks just so that they have more stamina for indom. Uh, 200 hammer brothers in the flanks and a hammer in the middle, or sorry, hammers in the flanks and, and a tank in the middle is like ideal. That just requires better brothers in this setup. We very much have mid game brothers here, uh, for the most part, with late game gear. Or some, some type of late ish game gear, right? We didn't give anybody Fames or Ijirak or anything. It just like wasn't necessary to build that stuff up, what we're, what we're showing here. We're just showing all the positions work, right? It's, again, there's like basically three positions. Uh, defense guys. And you want like two to three of them. Uh, backliners, you want like four of them. And midline guys, it's everybody else. All right. Oh, this guy's still fighting. Okay. Okay. So you see the MVPs of these backliners, and these are just one-star melee attack hunters. They're not great brothers. Everybody else is doing their job too, right? So let's make the team a little bit weaker. 
let's make the midline guys uh, all nimble. So we'll just give them raider gear. And we'll just give them hyena pelts, sure, whatever. Doesn't doesn't matter, right? Hyena pelts, dire wolves, doesn't matter. And we'll make them 84 attack and 25 defense, right? So this is your av totally average lowborn with one star on attack, I believe. So the only perks that change are dodge changes to brow, forge changes to nimble. That's it. No big change, right? And let's change. What else are we going to change? That's fine. We'll leave the we'll leave the tanks and banner as is. We'll just change one thing at a time, and we can keep see, keep seeing how it changes fights. If you look at our team now. This is uh, backing off our brother quality quite a bit. So we lost seven defense on all these guys. Lost one attack, uh, about thirty stat points, and we lost our forge gear. What did I give them for fatigue? 95 fatigue so this is like a thief that never levels a fatigue right no thieves have more defense this is like a day teller this is like a day teller with uh one star attack these these five brothers well, let's go ahead and do the fight again you'll be surprised So we're just going to back up two tiles again. I think that's kind of our, our setup. What How our setup works best against these camps is a turn one, two tile backup. So he's going to go here. He's going to go here. You're here. We want to try to catch as many as unholds as possible with our tanks, right? Keeping in mind that our... Banner tank is not that tanky. He'll do the job. But we can't leave him there forever, right? Go ahead and go here. And I want to catch this unhold. So that means my north flank is going to overflow. I mean, people, people have a really weird idea of how to use banners. Like, your, your banner, like we said before, is... It does feel weird, but your banner shouldn't be a fixed position. It's literally... He just, like, takes a roll. So everybody waits. Because the Chosen want to do this double turn crap, right? Where they get to, like, move, like, one tile away from your adrenaline and smash. You just, you just gotta wait them out. You gotta wait them out as much as you can. So here we have no actions. I think we can just burst this one down. He's a one-hander, so we're not worried about him. And I could move up, but I'd rather hold my position here. See here, now the children are going to come and try to double turn us. So we have nets for that purpose.
So remember, we said the top of the fight was going to overflow. Like, do I even have a good attack here? I could step up here. Is this tile safe? I think I can actually find a step here. I don't see how they get near him. So I'm going to step here and attack here. So they, we netted the Chosen that Adrenaline to blunt the impact of their Alpha Strike. We have a bit of a mess here, but this is kind of what we expected. Where's your Where's your second weapon? Did I forgot to give him. I forget to give him a weapon. Where does Long Axe go? All right. Well, this guy doesn't have a second weapon. It's kind of a problem. It's just a loadout error. I copy pasted all the guys, so it should not have been the case. Um, I don't think I need special help here. Hold on a second. My dog's freaking out. Hey, hey sit down. I don't know what the problem is. He just came in. Um, and we'll try to hold our position as long as possible. So he could get jumped here. I think we pull him back and help with this part of the fight. And I think we kill attack the lightly armored guys first if possible. I don't see any relevant attacks here. This tile is safe again. But this one doesn't have any it doesn't have great attacks. If I go here, I could attack him once. That's probably my best play. And I don't think I really want to do anything with midline here. If we space him a bit farther out, he can cover both of these. So I'm going to attack the easy one first to try to get a kill and trigger Killing Frenzy here. Same thing here, if we can get a kill and trigger Killing Frenzy. And I think I'll just nap this guy. Now, my guy, now that my guys have less and less melee attack, nets become more and more valuable. Oh, we'll trigger Killing Frenzy off that guy. And try to keep him sheltered. And again, this is why I value Pathfinder so much in these builds. Uh, they're really all about positioning on the throwers. They should be moving around a ton. So he's already used his quick hands. So he's he can either help this portion of the fight. Or this shouldn't be a problem here. He's already used his quick hands, so we can't take out his long axe. I think he should go work up and help the top part of the portion of the fight. And he can't do anything useful, but we can at least take out his axe. And we could dog if we had to, but I don't think it's... I think the fight's pretty well under control. Oh, there's that bone plating triggering. But even if it didn't, like, you protect yourself from 5% with deep HP pool. So we want to trigger... These guys are all fine to be in melee here, right? All fine to be in melee. Let's get that guy off the board. Using our quick hands to try to manipulate positioning. 
to minimize their ability to damage us. So they like they want to throw. I need to be thinking about how to control this unhold now. I could move here, and if this attack misses, I'm kind of in trouble. But it's a 95, right? Now I can just pop back. I could try to move here. Yep. You control that unhold up. So now this guy needs help. Let's start moving people down to help them. Uh, the unhold and the chosen together are really hard to deal with. We do need to focus on hold again. Our men are a lot weaker. Uh, they can't just like perma tank and unhold. The tanks can. Tanks. The tanks can. So we'll be thinking about how to deal with uh, this frost on hold right now without a tank on it. This is the guy that we forgot to bring a second weapon on, right? Somehow it got lost. Uh, we we better get on top of the sun hold. Start. You know, he got confident from from uh, killing some of these thralls. <sighs> kind of. Not good for us. And I think I'll start attacking with this banner, even if he doesn't have any attack. He's pretty beefy right now. I don't need to be wasting his AP. Get a new position to kill this this unhold. So you see we have like guys that we want to be fighting a bunch of enemies at once. That's the defense guys. Tanks, hammers, whatever. Uh, our banner in this case. Guys that can fight one or two enemies at a time. Our midline guys. And then our backliners that want to just be in the backline hitting stuff. Uh, I think this fight is a generalized... Like obviously, goblin fights are a bit different. This is like a pretty general Battle Brothers like challenging fight. There's like a lot of different things going on. This guy might flip here. Yeah, and this is going to happen. Their tanks don't care at all, right, about what's going on. Like, <laughs> this guy's down here still tanking Unhold, a Chosen, and a Reaver. Just, like, whatever. Oh, we do try to try to bait a flip out with this guy. Or to break the morale on this one. Okay, we killed him. That's just as good. These hybrids really don't want to be in melee. But right now, that's... It's a challenging fight. I think it's fine. A lot of our front liars are starting to get too beat up to continue fighting. And they, again, these guys are built to be in, in melee for one to two turns. Maybe even three with a bone fighting on them.
And this is literally the difference between endgame and mid-game company. Is like we do this fight like five times, we lose like one or two brothers total. That's like a mid-game team. And that means that our profit and loss is negative from these fights. You can see like these things that are going on here. We can probably handle them. But like, sometimes this will, our luck will be a little worse. And these situations won't be things that we can like kind of handle. Like, this guy is dead. But it's fine, right? Like, these aren't fights that these teams expect to survive consistently. Maybe we can save this guy. Yeah, maybe they'll do a dumb flip on him. I think he still might be dead, but... No, he's fine. This guy does do a lot more damage, the Frosty. But he's low, so I think I'm fine just throwing people at him. I know. Well, we're we're using mid game brothers, so I mean, obviously, like this is like roughly average RNG. It can go better. It can go worse. If it goes worse in these fights with these type of brothers, we get in trouble. I don't know the exact camp respawn mechanics. Um, we can do another little change of the team comp. Let's make our banner a thrower. And we won't have the luxury of having melee skill on him, right? That's like a luxury he's not going to have. Okay, so he loses Colossus. And gifted for Fort and Rally. Sounds fine. It's not like a, it's not like a set banner build either. The banner builds are always like adaptive to your brother. So just keep that in mind. And we'll give him the sash. And we'll replace our current banner. Uh, let's make our tanks nimble. Let's just keep making our team a little worse every fight. And we'll see the fights will just slowly getting harder. Get harder.
We'll use two nimble tanks. And we'll let's go ahead and replace our banner with a hammer bro. So we'll, we'll pretend like we're pretending this is a lone wolf game, right? And our lone wolf is our hammer. So our lone wolf is probably gonna be really strong, right? So we're gonna make our hammer brother pretty strong. We'll give him, like, uh, I don't know, sure-footed and drunkard, right? Yeah, we did one save game, Spearless. We did one save game help at the beginning. All right, so a team you're going to see is the same concept as we load this save up again. The same general concept. Uh, pretty much every team is going the same concept of two defense guys on the flanks. In this case, our defense guys are OP Lone Wolf. And this is like a typical level 11 Lone Wolf. Like, this isn't anything crazy. Uh, two Nimble Tanks. These guys aren't crazy either. 40 defense, I mean, that's good, but it's not like perfect. Yeah, you can send, you can uh, put the file on the Discord for us. We can take a look at it. Uh, one of the tanks we're replacing with our Lone Wolf. Otherwise, the runs fight's gonna look pretty much the same. And this is our banner. Let's go without the nets too. Let's go without the nets. So now we've downgraded our forge tanks to nimble. We've changed a couple other things too, so it's not like an identical comp. Our banner is in our back line as a thrower, which is a build I love. Our front line are all these dodge nimble guys. And they're not like great dodge nimble guys either. They're like the passable guys you'll have on like day, day 80 or whatever. So here we're going to lean into the Lone Wolf to be doing a lot of our damage. That means we can kind of focus targets a little bit more in the north with our throwers. As we are expecting our Lone Wolf to kind of carry the southern flank of the fight. We have the same composition here, right? Same idea. You know the builds keep changing. Well, we have two Indom tanks, so nets are nice. But sometimes you're going to be in the wilds, and you're going to want to do this fight, and you're not going to have nets, right? You don't always have all the tools you want. Did I not give him armor? Oh, yeah, he has armor. It just doesn't look like it. <laughs> Did I forget to give my tanks armor? I mean, they don't need it. They're nimble tanks. Uh, so it looks like they're going to post up one tile away from us, but I, I do prefer just waiting. Looks like a one tile back is going to be our best play. I'm going to move the banner first so that he can get his uh, banner up so our fearsome and procs are just a little bit better. I think 80% just beats 70. That's all my math there. And we'll just skew. So we're what we're doing is we're positioning to try to try and deny their two-handers attacks, right? 
making heavy use of the weight command. The weight command, guys, is one of your most powerful tools. Never underestimate it. How many attacks? We're, we're making them miss like five attacks here just by using weight. And attacking the two-hander is always more valuable than attacking a one-hander. Obviously, their throwing weapons are much more painful on our nimble guys than on our forge guys. Also, we don't have that third tank to block out their, their throwing weapons. So we will take more throwing weapon damage here. So again, we're safe to wait with everybody this turn. But none of their two-handers are going to swing. So there's no reason for us to, to take any actions right now. All right, now we can look at the fight. What problems do we have? This is not great, but I think we have solutions for it. So I have two options here. Uh, fight. This is a more problematic, but there's more enemies here. I could use my long axe and step up to help fight north. I think I'd rather just do damage here. Getting him in position to make better attacks next turn. This is a big problem up here that we have now, right? But what I think we have solutions for. That's unfortunate. One of our solutions was this guy. We have the dog, right? That's, that's our solution to that problem. This guy, I'm going to attack and start peeling him north. And we'll keep our shields fresh. Uh, to share your save file, um, we'll go over that after the fight, guys. All the assorted questions that are unrelated to what we're doing now. Are these guys, I didn't even give them initiative, I don't think, when I gave them dodge. They have, they have a hedge knight initiative. So they're not getting any kind of dodge. All right, thank you, Fearless. And we just we just attack the closest targets in general. If we can use AOE, we should be. And this tank looks like he's starting to struggle, so let's start getting some bodies his way. I think that's almost a kill. You see the, cr the throwers just carry these fights, right? Throwers are super strong. We'll keep the banner out as possible. As long as it's out when the melee lines clash, guys, it's all you need. Uh, if I go here, this unhold flips, so I need to move him here. This guy could be in a lot of trouble. He's going to get attacked with no shield and no indom. That's why we went, like, I saw this coming. His days took away all his stamina. So we're going to start moving bodies to where we can help him. 
And this is like a risky position for this guy. He's technically not strong enough to be here. We're just kind of hoping that... Uh, that we can do enough damage to, to fix the problem before it gets worse. Whoops, that was a useless attack. Not really need it up here. I can probably kill that guy and still kill that on hold, yeah. Same thing here, like I don't need to waste the AP moving towards this guy. I can just kill him with my reach weapon. And start getting your damage down here. Alright, fearsome proc. Get set up for damage. And now it's cleanup duty, right? damage. Let's just get this guy off the board. I don't want him to rally and come back and kill us. Keep him away from the flip. You can see where now that our guys are progressively getting worse, we're just gonna take more injuries. I don't think I in damn tanks do much here th anymore. Now that I don't, I don't need to like just pull the unholds off the battlefield. This should be a kill with a long axe, right? Assuming it's a hit. Wow, this guy's the dodge master, isn't he? Okay. And we have a little bit of damage still out of these guys. One of the advantages of quick hands. Is when they're off the battlefield, they're not really off the battlefield, right? They can always keep contributing, even even injured. We couldn't really tell our banner being much worse than a thrower. We just had to position him so he never got caught in melee.
Okay. So, uh, any other questions on team composition? Uh, edge, edge tile is just wait if you fight on this retreat tile, kill some enemies, run away. And you keep repeating it. And make a lot of fights really easy. Kill two kill two or three guys, run away. Like kite to the back of the map with like throwing weapons and then run away. And just keep doing it over and over again. Just things that are basically cheating that the game does can't like doesn't have a good way of stopping you from doing. So, I think that kind of sums up team composition. Let's kind of review some of the basic builds. Uh, I think these are like the core builds. This is like one of the core builds of the game. Most of your team should be this build. Dodge, Colossus, Gifted, Quick Hands, Underdog, Nimble, uh, Berserk, Frenzy, and Fearsome. Uh, axes are probably the best weapon. Axes do proc Fearsome twice. I don't think Disarm is worth using. Yeah, I think there's... Uh, Fearsome is good. Fearsome is better. Disarm has gotten, like, giga nerfed. I don't bother with it anymore. It's been nerfed, like, five times. Um, so what are the flex perks here? Underdog, Axe Mastery, and Pathfinder. You pick two of the three. I like Underdog because it makes my men more versatile. It lets me go into more positions that otherwise I couldn't. So to me, opening up lines of play on my brothers is worth perk. Um, Pathfinder makes you more mobile, saves fatigue as you move, and Axe Mastery saves fatigue as you attack, or saves, uh, increases your chances to hit with a reach weapon at one tile. So I would always take Underdog, and I would choose between Pathfinder and Axe Mastery, uh, based on my team comp. Tending towards Pathfinder, probably. Tanks. Uh, Colossus, Gifted, Recover, Shield Expert. This doesn't need to be Brawny. This is a Wasted perk. Obviously, I'm a Nimble Tank. Uh, Lone Wolf, Underdog, Nimble, Forged. Uh, this could be like Resilient. It could be Pathfinder. Well, they can't really tank Monolith because they can't wear the Idrock Helm. Can they last till late game? Yeah, they can. Do they? Huh? Sometimes. More than you think. If they, if you, if you build them with the own wolf perk and they're and they're good tanks with good resolve, this perk could also be fortified mind. Uh, resilient is good because it slows down bleeds. Dodge doesn't really do anything. Yeah, yeah the nimble tanks last. Oh yeah, these these guys get replaced with uh, a similar build as they die, with. Uh, Dodge and Nimble get replaced with Brow and Forged. As you find better brothers in Forge gear, you stop building these guys. Same thing with the tanks. Like as these guys die, they just slowly get replaced with Forged. These get like you know Forged tanks, like we went over before. And then the Lone Wolf build would be. I mean, you're always taking these perks on Forged. Colossus, Brow, Gifted, Underdog, Forged, uh, Zerk, Frenzy, Reach Advantage. Hammer Mastery, Fearsome. You can skip Fearsome for Brawny if you had to. You don't want to, but sometimes... Sometimes you just can't make the fatigue work. So you have to take Brawny. Brawny is the worst stat perk that you can take. Gifted being the best. Colossus being the second best. Uh, Brow being the third. Brow is basically like 22% hit points. If you like math out what... Front four is like what Brow gives you. That way is Brawny kind of like... Just not quite good enough, right? It's worth like, it's useless early, it's, it's useless late, it's good for like, when you're in non-fame gear, fighting non-living things. So I, I rarely take brawny except for on tanks. Um, backline build, I just spam this build backline, I don't think there's a reason to use another build. Uh, Colossus, Gifted, Quick Hands, uh, Pathfinder. Fearsome, da, um, throwing, duelist, Zerk Frenzy. And you always want to use a two-hander. Yeah, one-handed weapons are, are, are super bad in this game. 
So even though you have a dual hand, uh, one-handed melee weapons are super bad. Even though you have the duelist perk, you still want to load out this this two-hander. So I think all my teams generally end up looking about like this. Now you could, as this guy dies, you could replace this with a second hammer guy. And go down to just one tank, that's fine. Uh, if you only have one tank for these fights, you need a ton of nets to deal with the unholds. So, I think that's uh, that, that covers general team composition. So to review, four backliners, some sort of thrower hybrid. Three defense brothers. At least one forge tank. And then for the other two slots, they can be a nimble tank or two-handed hammers. Or an indom banner. But those are the defense builds. I mean, in midline builds, some sort of quick hands. Uh, preferred being axes. Pullworm's good. Maces are good as well. If you, for some reason, can't fit fierce when your build, then Pathfinder Pullworm takes over. Uh, so I'm going to go take a quick break, take care of my dog. We'll come back and we will do a save file. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be back in like 10, guys, and we'll talk about the save file. Uh, thank you, Shadow, for uploading that. Oh, yeah, I'll be back in a few. And uh, go ahead and, and go ahead and feel free to put as many questions as you want in chat, and I'll we'll go down and answer them all in order when I get back.
All right, I'm back. So let's go down the list. All right, good to see you, Not Shadow. Uh, any questions on the spider fight? You think we gave you enough information to resolve the situation on your own? Yeah, throwing is a lot more powerful than bows or crossbows, so you don't really, you don't really have a use to it. like. Some fights you want to use bow or crossbow. I don't think you waste your time with mastery though. Yeah, at the bottom in the guides, in the build guides. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, it's just where they want to be in, in the formation. It's like this tempo hybrid. They want to be in the back, right? Uh, Lightning Sword Wag guy wants to be somewhere up front. He's like an off tank. Are the cards of the tabs? Oh, interesting. I don't know what they mean. Galadin put them in. Looks like red is for frontliners. Yellow is for tanks. Green for banners. We have, yeah, so it's just like a... a kind of help classify what they are. The chart of all the weapon damage. Lower is better, hits to kill. See, throwers being the best in the game and swordlands being the worst in the game of the weapons we tested. Alright, we can do that save file in a bit. Yeah, we're just doing, we're doing like, guide content. Yeah, that happens now, Shadow. Let's do one more thing before we get off this train. Uh, let's 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 go with the the, the Reddit meta, guys. This is this is what people recommend on Reddit. So they recommend uh, Cleaver Duelist, right? That's the Reddit meta with Recover and Duelist and Whips. Let's, let's do a fight with the Reddit meta and see if we can not get wiped. With the exact same brothers, by the way. We better make them dumb as well. Alright. How do you think? I, I guess think this fight's gonna go. If we replace our. Our builds with Reddit builds. Oh, Orc Cleaver, you're right. Orc Cleaver. I better give everybody Iron Lungs, too. Oh, you're gonna get Iron Lungs. Everybody gets Iron Lungs for free. And the backliners. Uh, I think the 4 AP weapons are just bad, so. Like, without Cleaver Mastery, you don't really do that great with, uh. With trying to disarm stuff. We better not use these useless throwers either. We better have something awesome in the backline, like a War Scythe. Yeah, give me a War Oh, give me a War Scythe. Whatever, Sword Lance. <clears throat> Where is it? A useless weapon. Fencing Sword is like between good and a meme. But throwing is good, of course. Okay. Um. 
And what do we need on this guy? He, he's got to have overwhelm. So instead of ranged attack, we're going to level initiative. This is going to go great. We get dodge, one, two, and relentless. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Uh, he's also... These guys all need the Viper Glorious Quickness, too. And then we'll also make them dumb. <laughs> all right. And I guess we need to give him some Southern Fashion, too. This fashion's inexcusable. Okay. What do you think is going to happen in this fight? <clears throat> what's our what's our prediction? Is Sims going to learn he was always wrong and that these are the best builds in the game? Or are we going to get wiped? Well, I mean, the game just looked easy when we use good builds, right? Let's uh, let's play the game the way Reddit recommends we play it. Oh wait, no, no. I I should I should take away all my HP too and level fatigue instead. Let's do that. Is that too Mimi, guys? That's probably too Mimi. So we have two, three good builds still, right? Can the good builds carry? Oh, I didn't use a bow guy, that's right. The good is we're gonna overwhelm the heck out of this unhold, we're just not gonna kill it. Look at that damage. Look at that damage. I'm getting overwhelmed already. Look at all that sword lance damage, guys. <clears throat> I 
This is going great, isn't it? Oh no. Oh, I can't overwhelm them now. Well, I can't use my attack. Oh, I'm already, I'm already out of stamina. I gotta hit once. I got hit once and I already can't use my, my skill. Look at this guy. Stamina intensive builds are great. You guys already out of the fight. You'll see though, when we get to hit them in. Why are we getting surrounded, guys? Oh, it's because we can't kill anything. That's why we're getting surrounded. Uh-oh. What's going on? Why is this fight going so poorly? It's like if I can't burst like half their team down in turn two, I just lose. And the weapon mix don't do burst damage because they're meme weapons. All right, this guy got hit once. He's out of the fight. Yeah. They do a ton of damage, they don't use fatigue. Remember, this team is way better than the other team. Everybody has free iron lungs on this team. So this entire team has iron lungs for free. Oh, you're out of the fight already. Oh, we overwhelmed somebody. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. These brothers are all better than the ones before. We use the two worst things in the game. We use Overwhelm, we use Duelists. Oh, oh. Boom! Oh, look at that. Look at that reap. I mean, one of the kills was my own team. One of the kills may have been my allies, but it was worth it, because he was dead anyways. Yeah, non-thrower duelist, yeah. Or non-giga high rolled famed item. Look at that decapitation though, look at all that damage that just did. Look at the damage. Imagine if I had quick hands, I could kill all these guys. I mean, I just, I just wouldn't use backline as that. Honestly. I could have recovered there. And gotten back enough fatigue to attack twice next turn. Wait, did I even hit him? That, that's full sword, that's peak sword lance, guys. Look at that damage on this guy. Yeah, that must be it. I think we still win this fight, we just lose all the all the bad builds. <laughs> do we still win it? Yeah, we probably do. Don't worry, the guys, the good builds will carry. We overwhelmed him, look at that. I 
mean, people can't not see the benefit of gifted, but some of them do. <laughs> some people think gifted is like uh, not an auto pick. No, that's a good weapon. Yeah, you, you should still use good fames, guys. Good, good fames, you should, you should still use no matter what they are. Like, a spear duelist can be OP with a good enough spear. Like, it doesn't matter what the item is. Good, good fames change everything. You still need the right brother to use uh, a fatigue intensive weapon. Yeah, your team looked good, Shadow. I think it's not just a Sins build. That's like the uh, general like people that play the game a lot build. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you can do with the damage? Uh, armor ignores Sword Lance? You can vendor it. <laughs> you can buy two stacks of tools. I mean, this is a lot of damage if he manages to stay alive and hit things twice. Well, I pick gifted right away because the the stat boost is generally the best thing you can take at level at level three. So I normally take Colossus and then gifted, and then at level four I go back for student. On um, Battle Force Bros. Uh, I mean, so the reason why is because you take Colossus at one and gifted it two. Look at the damage I just did with this guy. Uh, Colossus at one and, and gifted it two. You can give yourself a ton of hit points and. Stop yourself from dying in the back line to like crossbows. There's a, there's a very good chance that gifted keeps you alive. Most of the perks that are very strong early are not strong at all late. Things like nine lives and fast adaptation are very very strong level two and three. But by the time you're like even a bad brother at level eleven, those perks aren't good anymore. So gifted's both powerful early and even more powerful late. Wait, we're about to actually get to use Reap. I mean, I may have hit my own guy. We can kill unarmored thralls with this. Look how great that weapon is. Let's try it again. Look at that. Look at that damage. Yeah, 200 foils are really bad. Even a max roll 200 foil isn't worth using. Look, oh, I get to recover. Look at that great recover perk. What if I give them brawny? <laughs> Just for the extra fatigue and a nimble guy, would that be... Yeah, doubtful, but you never know. And we, we won without that many losses. To be fair. Oh, I still have a whip. I don't have quick hands, but I have a whip. Did we only lose like one guy? Look at all this damage they can do when they're not actually getting attacked. That's a lot of bleeds in that guy. Is this guy still fighting? Oh, 
Oh, this, is how, this is how Reddit says you should play the game, right? We still lost like two guys, I think. Maybe one. Two guys. So we had done this fight four times with zero losses, and here we lose two guys. And we almost lost like everybody. That wasn't that far from a wipe. Who did the damage? Well, the banner did 580. The hammer did 1820. So the two good builds <laughs> did the damage. Uh, I mean, these guys did all about the same, right? I mean, it's not decent. It's a fight you can win every time with no losses with these brothers. It seems decent if this is how you think the game should be played. Um, but if you look at our other fights, Chosen have gotten nerfed a ton, guys. They're not what they used to be. They're pretty easy to farm now. Now that Adrenaline got nerfed and Rotate got nerfed, they're I mean, not really that hard of a fight. And Fearsome's like, Fearsome and Brow are better now. That's why we always farm Chosen in all of our runs. We clear like we just clear the whole snow and tundra by like day eighty all the time, like in our tempo runs. So uh, this is, I would say this is compared to the other results, right? I would say it's bad. Okay, uh, let's check this. Fix my save file thing. Go ahead and download the other one. Somebody uploaded. And we'll give it a try. It's an Orc Siege. Oh, let's give it a try. Good luck. All right. We <laughs> had 12 Warhammer duelists. I'd probably do better than Orc Cleaver duelists. Right, beginner, beginners, we get plus five to all of our stats hidden. Uh, I don't know if that fixes our problem of 45 Orcs. Holy moly, okay. Let's look at our brothers. We got our lone wolf. We have mostly reasonable perks. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable. I would say like the greatsword is going to have fallen off by now. But it, it, it's pretty strong early. So this guy's really good. I probably wouldn't have him in the front line. Okay. Let's take a look through these guys. This guy's not bad. A banner is not bad either. Yeah, leveled up, he'd be great. A lot of Pathfinder, which is fine. This guy is a god two-hander, but we made him a tank, okay. Hmm. 
Nice fashion choices. We have decayed coated plates with a leather helmet. Got some throwers, okay. Maybe not the most range skill, but he'll do. Yeah, this is a pretty good brother. Style matters, yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, we're pretty reasonable. Whoa! Look at this brother. We're doing reasonable things here in general. Um, I don't think this guy would be good enough. Oh, actually, maybe he is. Yeah. Alright. We, we can't fight 45 orcs this way. We're supposed to be fighting siege engines. Okay. I thought we had noble allies helping us. Try to grab the high ground here if we can. Problem is we don't have anybody with nimble, so we just can't stay alive in these fights. Yeah, there could be another position. Do we have to bait our lone wolf out? Sadly, that may be the only way. So none of these guys can actually fight in melee reliably without dying. Uh, Roger can. This guy's nimble. Boom! Look at that. So we're just gonna make the nobles do the work. So our main goal here is to make the nobles do most of the work, but to still get some experience in gold. We would like to be able to use the nobles to fight the other stack as well. Yeah, who said flails aren't good? So what happened here is kind of the same thing that happened with the scooters is there's this is supposed to be three separate fights and you they all aggroed together. So you do have to split up the stacks. Right, let's start getting scouting down here. So the foil guy is putting in work because he actually has nimble. So we can actually like, use him as a frontliner. Like Gustav? Oh, Roger is nimble as well. I know. I don't really want to deal with the Zerker, I'm honest, to be honest. We have nobles for that, right? That dog will get him. 
I want to get up all these kills and just let somebody else handle them. The nobles will kill the berserker eventually. Well, I'm hoping. There's not that many greenskins left. We've killed most of them. Yeah, I mean, this looks reasonable. I, I, I think you're on the right track in general. I don't really want to leave my high ground. I think I probably have to, though. We're using it generally the correct weapons, which is... Like throwing weapons and two-handers, pull arms. Maybe we'd be better off with some more reach weapons, but I, I'm assuming you just don't have them, so... Yeah. You're generally doing everything right. Okay, this Berserker, how do we how do we even handle him? I have no idea. He's gonna one shot anybody on our team. Hmm. This is where it gets tricky. We we don't have any we don't have anybody that can deal with this guy. I guess the lone wolf has to go fight the berserker. That seems nothing can go wrong with that plan. Alright, Lionheart, good luck. Uh, everybody remember this clip? Let's keep in mind what we're dealing with here. D trick is As the fight develops, I can kind of use some of these guys as fighters. Kind of. I'm gonna try not to lose your dudes, but there's only so much we can do here. Alright, Lone Wolf dodged. Harvard. He does have this armor. As long as he doesn't get a headshot, he's actually probably okay to fight. I think it's dog time here. You, you have a good good job of having a lot of dogs to help you take some of these harder stretch fights too. It's really helpful here.
Right, they're running away. Still have a problem with this guy. A lot of this fight is just knowing about which of your brothers can can like safely fight in melee when. The specific fight. Like this guy's got nimble, so he might be stuck meleeing the orc. Yeah, I mean I don't mind letting the nobles die for me, right? This guy might struggle to be a two-handed hammer. I would think this would just be a really good dodge guy. You can make him fatigue neutral too, since you're playing beginner. I'll take Colossus, take this. Yeah, I might just make this guy uh, fatigue neutral. He just really has has bad secondaries. I like 45 base resolve. For most of my guys, Nimble. Um, anything we can take from here? We have nets now. This guy, I might just prefer a Goblin Pike in the back line. Uh, here, I guess this helm is pretty decent, huh? We can give him this one fodder. Yeah, this is reasonable. Put him on the flank then. Um. Can this guy take contact yet? I don't think so. Let's put him in the back of the pike. This guy's got nimble. He's gonna have he's gonna have to do work for us. I think it's correct to go shield mastery. Or at least like not dodge. Maybe nine lives would have been correct. I'm not sure. This guy's fine though. I don't think we really need a flail though. I think this this is probably better. Even with mastery. This yeah, this seems good, right? Anybody else that can't take contact here? Okay, we're gonna rely on this helm to hope it protects him. Oh, let's get in there. Well, actually, you know, this longsword's pretty good in this fight against these uh, low, low bees. Let's just switch that around. These guys, we hope they don't need these weapons, right? In this fight. I'll fix that as well. This looks good. He doesn't have in damage recovery, yet, so I'm gonna give him the falchion. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that's kind of what you get out of nomads: is bad traits and bad secondaries, but generally good combat stats. Orcs are all coming from one direction. That's kind of interesting. I think. You can kind of run near goblins. Your forge armor should be good against them. So I'm thinking here, like, who can fight goblins? The goblins aren't that scary in short fights. 
Uh, goblins just kind of bog you down, and they'll kill you that way. But here, I think... I think these guys can handle them. Yeah, the traits are... The traits, uh... Each, each background has its own trait pool. Nomads have a very bad, a very bad trait pool. Melee on range, so they're not as good as their stats imply they could be. And here we should have enough dogs to just overwhelm them, I would think. Thank you. This guy doesn't have like nimble or anything yet. I mean, he's got this armor. It's probably good enough for these weapons. We don't need to leave this little like high ground hidey hole we have, do we? I think we're pretty cozy here. Dietrich is meant to be a tank, but he's not really yet. I think we still use him up a bit. Young don't have a push or anything. This guy should... I think this orc might just run away. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they calculate the siege equipment as part of a relevant team. Yeah. And we should be able to close here. Okay, guy's gonna run away and we can farm his experience there. And I'm just gonna pull them around to catch these last couple orcs coming through. Don't really have. I don't think we have priorities. I think this fight's pretty much under control, I would say. I mean, nothing like bad is happening. Just kill him, doesn't matter. But yeah, your, your team comp is pretty good. Your recruitment strategy looks pretty good. Um, your, your builds look like they're on track. They're good builds. You're using the right weapons. Alright, okay, we'll, we'll check that out after this, Galadin. Yeah, Galadin's getting a lot, of, a lot of stuff updated there. Very appreciated by me and I'm assuming everyone else in the community as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're in a fine spot here. I think you're in a fine spot. Alright. We got these all three fights without a loss. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and save this for you. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Okay, but we're getting levels though. Late game, we're gonna go duelist for the throwing weapons. I think we're happy with these stats. I think we can actually greed for this three and we can greed for this three melee defense, can't we? I think we can. Mid game, we got throwing mastery. Better take the HP. Junaid to a hammer. I'm gonna go student here. I think we just need this guy to level. We're gonna try to protect him. We still have most of our nets. We haven't even really lost dogs. What's our repair timer? 
we just go here. Can we get the caravan in here? Probably not quite, huh? We have a lot of throwers. I think we actually would prefer fighting in the day. They do have wolf riders, but we have so many nets. The wolf rider is going to tell me I should put shields on these guys. And then this Felshan becomes better than the hammer against the wolf riders. Uh, he has Nimble, which leveled his melee defense. We have more nets. And nets. Yeah, I think that's. I think we're happy with this, right? Okay, so what can we do to make the fight easier terrain wise? Could try to claim this little ball. That might probably be correct. Yeah, the devs don't seem interested in more changes. Uh, from what I've what I've heard. This guy's not actually tanky because he doesn't have nimble or anything like that. This is too safe of a town for the lone wolf. I think that one's I have the lone wolf screening through here. But I mean they've put a lot of time into the game, so maybe that's just what it's gonna be. So we're just looking for slightly better positioning here. Now, I'm not sure that we're definitely we're like surely going to get it, but yeah, these guys are gonna cover. I'm like, unless I'm fighting Kraken, then I take all the damage. I take all the damage. So uh, the Wolf Riders make me a little 